But before I jump into that story, let me share with you a shorter one before. I was invited to a very interesting wedding, and I'll leave it as the word interesting. What happened, there is a man who I knew since high school, and many years have passed, and we no longer connected. He went to a different state, I went to a different location. Then he messaged me, he's like, you know what, I finally found your number, I've been seeing you on social media, I want you to come to my wedding. SubhanAllah, high school classmate, it's incredible, I'm happy for him. But I don't know anything about him, like I don't know his situation, uh, I don't know who's attending, I don't know it's a mixed wedding, I have no clue. So I said, you know what, uh, inshallah I will look into it, please, please give us what, a reminder. Khalas, from now on any wedding there's a khatira, subhanAllah. So then I said, inshallah, I go to the wedding hall and I'm shocked. I'm going to generally categorize people, it's okay, just generally speaking. The majority were people that did not look Muslim at all. Image, outside. Then there's a small group of people that seemed to be Muslim and lonely. <laughs> okay, and you can all together. How did I notice that? I think because of the beard, one guy wearing a kufi, like, mm, subhanAllah. So I said to myself, what if I die here? SubhanAllah. Right? Rahmatullah, brother Majid, look where he's at today. May Allah forgive us. So I told myself, you know what, I'll go to that wedding, I give the khatira and I literally bounce, okay, and just leave this place. So while I was sitting by myself, there was a table, and this was a long time ago, and the groom's sister, she comes to me, she said, Brother Majid, inshallah, we are looking forward, I was happy to hear Allah's name, huh? we're looking forward that you give the reminder as people are eating. I said, that's the worst time ever. Don't you ever do that to me, please, okay? Or do that to anyone. Inshallah, we have our brother about to speak while everybody is eating. Don't do that. Even it's not comfortable for those eating to eat, right, in the gathering. If it's a small piece of uh, pizza, that's a different story. So I said, you know, like, is there anything that we can push my reminder to after? Uh, she said, my brother wants the whole wedding to start with your reminder. And it will be his start of his wedding and it will be the end of my life, yani, subhanAllah. Anyhow. So I'm very nervous, and part of it is that I don't know what to talk about. I have no clue what to talk about. I actually left the wedding hall thinking, what, what do I say? What do I say that everybody can relate to? What will I say while they're eating? So it's a musibah upon musibah upon musibah. So anyhow, so then they call, everybody's eating, okay? Actually, it was just as they were serving, which is worse, come on. So he said, Brother Majid, please welcome to, to the stage. So I come, I say, Assalamu uh, alaikum, peace be upon you, okay? And wallahi, I don't know anyone that was paying attention. That's as expected. So uh, I started saying jokes about the, 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 the husband, uh, the, my friend, making jokes about him, almost about to expose him from high school, but I said not that far. So then people are not paying attention. So I said, you know what, as I was outside, there's one topic. If they gave me 1% of their brain, 1%, I will grab their attention, inshallah. So I said, brothers and sisters, Ladies and gentlemen, there is something that everyone in the world strives to achieve. Something every male, every female, young and old, Muslim, non-Muslim, wants to achieve and attain. Allah is my witness, I would say half stopped eating. What is it? So then I said this, then after that, I said, and the thing that people are looking for is... And everybody paused. Even my friend, who was one of the Muslims, huh, who was still eating when I said, it is, people waited, happiness. So like happiness. Then I said, there's only one way to attain happiness. There's only one way to feel in peace and tranquility and contentment. Only one. Not a single one was eating. What does it tell you? The end, the, I'm going to pause the story actually. I'm not going to continue. The whole session is the answer. They got a khatira, you'll get a full-blown lecture to 4.45 p.m. today, inshallah. Everybody wants it. You see what just happened? The religious, not so religious. The women and the men, the young and the old, the Muslim and the kafir, all paid attention. I want that. I want that happiness. I want that contentment. And this story gives it to you in such a beautiful way. May Allah grant us the best. Amir Rabbil Alameen. Allah says in the Quran, as beautifully our dear brother Ahmad, may Allah bless him, has recited, Allah says, Inna Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa. Let's go step by step. A man, his name is Qarun. He was from the people of Musa. So now you know what era he exists. Now, the word I want you to focus on is the word min. 
Min from ulama, they say the word min indicate that he was just a general guy, nothing special about him. You guys see that? He was just a humble beginning that he had. He was not a special guy. He's not from the elite family. He's not a prophet. He's one of the people of Musa. Fantastic. So far, so good. Because Allah wants us to appreciate how beginnings happen. But Allah says, Qarun, who was from the people of Musa, imagine your imam is the best imam in America. Can you imagine? Can you imagine you have the greatest scholar that ever walked in North America? Allahu Akbar. Imagine his imam was Musa alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. So Allah says, Inna Qaruna kana min qawmi Musa. Then what did he do? عَلَيْهِمْ He behaved arrogantly towards them. He transgressed against them. He became arrogant. Ah, why are people arrogant? What is arrogance? Two things. Remember that. What is takabbur? Either this or that or both. May Allah protect us. Al-kibru batru al-haqq. Arrogance is rejecting the truth. Someone tells you the way you parked your car is incorrect. Well, there's a lot of parking spots. That's arrogance. You missed the exit in the highway. You missed the exit. I know where I'm going. Arrogance. Oh, uh, a brother, you know what? The, the word that you said to that sister, I don't think it was appropriate. Mind your own business. Arrogance. Right? Sister, your hijab, your neck. Oh, arrogance. No, if someone advises you, don't push back. If it's true, if it's factual, it doesn't matter who says it. Are you guys with me? It doesn't matter. This, the youngest child in this room can tell me, Brother Majid, the way you said fabagha was not correct. I won't be like, bro, just go back to your parents. If he is right, I will take it from him. Right or wrong? All of us. It doesn't matter. Subhanallah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look to what he says. He says, أَبْغَضُ الْكَلَامِ إِلَى اللَّهِ Authentic narration. The most hateful statement to Allah is for someone to tell you, اِتَّقِ Fear Allah. Brother, it's inappropriate. Sister, that's wrong. Then you say, عَلَيْكَ بِنَفْسِكَ Mind your own business. That mind your own business statement, when you are advised, a correct advice, is the most hateful speech to Allah. As Muslims, we should look around for people to advise us. We would pay people to consult and provide us any feedback, yes or no. And imagine when it comes to your religion, that's the best of the best. Subhanallah. So this man, Allah gave him a humble introduction. Then he became so arrogant. What's the other type of arrogance or the other version of arrogance or dimension? If the first one is batr al-haq, rejecting the truth. What's the second one? Go ahead. Correct. When you think you're better than other people, which is in Arabic, ghamtu nas You look down upon others. Right? Not because, oh, you know what, I don't want to sit next to that person. I'm not sitting. Why? They smell bad. That's a good reason. Yes or no? But I'm not going to sit next to them because they're from that country. Oh, you're in trouble. It's an E-R-S-O-S. -S. It's a disaster if you don't fix yourself. And I remember I said this in one halaqa many years ago, and I got an email from my brother. An email that was so sad, but so good. An email that some of us may have to write to our own selves. What did he say? A nice long paragraph. The point is one line. He said, I heard your talk about arrogance, especially not about rejecting the truth, about what? Looking down upon people. Then he said, while I was sitting in the session, I tested myself, I recalled my behavior, and I truly believe I'm a racist. Subhanallah. He said, there are people, and he mentioned the nation of his and the nation of the people, subhanallah, he just looks down upon. He said, I cannot sit next to them. I cannot. So why is it so good you are able to find that you have an issue of that group of people because of their nationality? Nothing else. Not the way they smell, not the way they talk, not the way they behave. Simply because of a skin color or a passport that they hold or a location they were born in. May Allah forgive us. So once you have that, and now maybe you're thinking, now we work on it. Allah says, وَآتَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْكُنُوزِ He was so rich. Allah gave him so much money. Some ulama said, uh, some scholars, the wealth of Qarun would classify him as the richest of humans that ever walked on earth on an individual level. On an individual level, one of the richest humans ever walked, not in his generation, in the history of humanity. So much so 
that Allah does not tell you how much money he has. Allah does not tell you he has uh, 17,000 houses and he owns a private jet or he owns... Allah doesn't say that. Allah tells you the weight of the keys. Allah tells you how big is his wallet. Allah tells you what does it take to make a purchase. So Allah says, the keys to his treasures. Obviously, there's no banks or credit cards. So everything is actual, physical, tangible. So the keys that are holding to be open to locks that have treasures behind require a strong man. It requires a group of strong. They work out to carry his keys. You know how we have security guards to like protect like a president or whatever the case is? They had people working out physically training to carry his keys to the treasures. If that's the key, what's the treasure? That's how rich he was. But Allah says a key, not word, Allah says a key letter. And that's what's beautiful about these sessions. We don't just go really quickly, though you can, but we go a little bit in depth. Allah adds this letter. What's that letter? A harf. Ha, what does this letter indicate? You know, think with me. Allah says, وَآتَيْنَا who? What does that mean? Okay, go ahead. We gave it to him. Okay, fantastic. So what, what matters, Jenny? Okay. Why did Allah not say he was given? Or why did Allah not say he is rich? Why did Allah say, and we gave him? What is it? He did not work hard for it. Good point, good point. Uh, maybe he worked hard, but the source, you are correct in a way, but maybe he worked hard, but Allah is saying the source is me, regardless of how hard you work. So Allah in this ayah should make everyone here, from the youngest to the oldest, all of you should be comfortable that if you and I, we try to make money, strictly money I'm talking, I went to this uh, job, you went to that same job or whatever, and you applied, I got it, you didn't get it. We are as qualified, I got the job, you did not. Or with the same family, I just happened to have a lot more money. SubhanAllah, you tried the same business, didn't work. I tried the same business, it worked. Does it not happen with you sometimes? It doesn't mean one is good and one is bad at all. It's just Allah willed that it doesn't work except with this person. Ajeeb. So here, Qarun, Allah said, we gave him. So what does it mean? If you're working so hard, don't just blame yourself that oh, there's something wrong with me. No, you did the MCAT seven times. You did the PCATs 25 times, and you're not, not smart, mashallah. But khalas, qaddarallah masha fa'al, Allah will. You can work hard to pass bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but this is just a general example. May Allah grant us the best. So Allah is the one who gives, you strive, and may Allah make it easy. So Allah says how rich he is. Okay, then what happened? His people, a group of them, will tell Qarun five things. So we can, Allah is putting this advice in the Quran. We have to emphasize Allah is the one referencing this. So every word is re remarkable. Every word is a miracle. So may Allah allow us to walk the talk and apply what we learn. Say Amin. So five, number one. Now if you're a general Arab, huh, you will be confused. If you're Arabic from Palestine, Lebanon, Urdun, Yemen, Saudi, Kuwait, uh, Oman, mashallah, we have wonderful people. La tafrah, what does la tafrah mean? Don't be happy. And that's the issue when we have our Ar Arabism, okay, and we apply it to the Quran. Because sometimes our Arabi is not Quran Arabi. I'll give an example. Prophet Musa, he goes with his uh, companion, uh, what's his name? Yusha. Ahsanat, Allah barik fiqh. So he goes, so Musa tells Yusha, Atina, Ghada Ana, Arab, Ghada is what? Lunch. But what is meant here? Breakfast. Tarwi'ah, right? <laughs> Subhanallah. So here you have to be very careful. Like, Ilqalahumu la tafraha. Shuft al Islam, because in Arabic, in common language, farah means happiness, right? Happiness. So here, if you go with your Arab mind, it says, do not be happy. Like, Wallah, Islam, I knew it from the beginning. A'udhu billah. These Muslims, that's why they're never smiling, because of this ayah. Ajeeb. La tafrah means don't be too proud. Don't be arrogant. 
and look to what they're saying and look to what they focused. They focused on something that is disastrous. La tafrah. Don't be like don't be too proud. Okay, why in Allah la yuhibbul farihin? So we learn from the first advice why you say something. Your kids will tell you, why, why can I not watch more than 20 minutes on YouTube? Right? What's your reasoning? Uh, you just, uh, uh, sometimes that's our reason, sah? I'm your dad, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. And you know why I got angry? Because I had no answer. So the ego kicks in. Sah? Honestly. And sometimes our kids corner us in a way, wallahi ajeeb. So how do we re respond to this? I don't know. Kung Fu Panda. I don't know what we do. <laughs> right? They tell you, you told us we cannot have dessert after iftar until we sit in the living room and we cannot double dip with our fork in the cake. And I saw you, you and Baba double dipping. <laughs> right? How, how, now, good luck. You know what's the best way to teach them? You're right. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. That's it. That's how it's supposed to be. May Allah grant us the best. You can tell I'm suffering, right? May Allah make it easy, right? And my kids are like, oh my, subhanAllah. Inna Allah la yuhibbul farihin. So what's the moral of the story? Tell people, if you can, why not? If it's a, available, tell them. Don't do this, why not? So you know what, when you as a parent, as an adult, as an educator, as a friend, you want to tell your friend, don't cheat. But before you tell him don't cheat, know why he's not supposed to cheat. So this will push you to do what? Some research. And this will make you a better person, because now you will grow in knowledge. And then you might end up realizing there's a difference of opinion. Just like the classic example I gave before about eating camel's meat. In the madhab, the opinion of Imam Ahmed, eating camel's meat, probably no one ate it here before, I assume, right? Breaks your wudu. And I remember in the Windsor Mosque, in that halaqa, I was sitting and the sheikh said, what breaks your wudu? So I said, eating camel's meat. Everybody thought, and I'm a genuine. Like, who eats camel meat and how did you know that? So I said, eating camel's meat breaks your wudu, 100%. So then eventually the sheikh shared with us how there's a difference of opinion. They're like, so not everything you have to advise towards. So here they told them, in Allah la yuhibbu. Did they say anything else? Like, explain why? Did they explain why besides that? Did they give Qarun any other reason not to be arrogant besides? Allah doesn't like it. They did not. Why? Because that's enough of a reason. So next time someone says, why can I not watch this clip? Why can I not buy this item, which is haram or wrong? Say, because Allah doesn't like it. Period. Done. Right? That's it. And if we raise our children right, inshallah, may Allah bless all kids, young and old, and we're all children to parents, that tests your iman. That tests your submission to Allah. If I told you Allah does not like it, you drop it. It's not about mom or dad, yes or no. So that's what they're telling Qarun. It's not because, oh, Qarun, you're hurting my feelings. No, they're smart people. Because if they said, Qarun, you leave, I get hurt. And my, no, Allah doesn't like it. So this means what? Be rich, but don't act in that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la yuhibbu al -farihin. Fantastic. Next one. Advice number two. They said to him, seek the reward of the afterlife with whatever Allah has given you. This equation, once again, this is a time, an infinite greatness type of advice Allah puts in the Quran. So what did Allah give you? The ulama say how beautiful it is to use the blessing Allah gave you for his sake. So some people among us are blessed with so much money. If you want to apply that verse, what does it mean? You give in charity. You are to be known. Very generous individual. Fantastic. Okay, someone is uh, blessed with so much knowledge. The best way to seek the reward of Jannah, the best way to seek Allah's pleasure in Akhirah with the knowledge is how? Teach it. Um, how about someone was so blessed with physical strength? Tukur Gaza. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. What is it? You're physically strong. Help the weak. Fantastic. Now, why that question kind of came up? Because every single one of us who's working out should have had an answer. Yes? 
every one of us who steps once on a treadmill or goes and tries to get a dumbbell or a bench press, we should, in the process of wanting to be healthy, wanting to look good, wanting to be strong, I want akhirah. So how will I use that? I remember one of the du'at, mashallah, built, fit. And he said, and other shuyukh are teaching us, when you are fit, your message is stronger. Subhanallah. He says, people respect those who are fit. Your message is more powerful. I'm looking at a powerful message. The power and physical power, if you can, if Allah is able, to, not Allah is able. If you have it, then that strengthens the message. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Then uh, they said to him, it doesn't mean all oh, focus on akhirah, everything akhirah, which is in a way understandable, but also enjoy the dunya. So get the best of both worlds. Yes, give a nice donation, give your zakah and charity, but it's okay to own a house that is 1.2 million if you can afford it. Nothing wrong with it. And I know when I say that sometimes, that at least two people that come to me after the lecture say that's not right. No, it's, you're wrong, sorry. There's nothing wrong with owning a Ferrari. Nothing. It is haram to own a Civic when you stole someone's money. So it's just, what is it that you did? Now it becomes relative. Are you doing your dues? Are you getting the Ferrari at the expense of neglecting your family? You're crossed the line. You see what just happened? Are you getting that nice house at the expense that you will never show up to the masjid because you want a very big land? I don't think you did the right decision. So you see what just happened? So you just put, it's like a puzzle. As, as you put the pieces together, you can own it, inshallah. But at what expense will you own it? May Allah grant us the best. Inshallah, one day I'll own a Ferrari. Allahu a'lam. Right? May Allah grant us the best. Amir Rabbil Alameen. But the point being here is just something to reflect upon. One time, especially us in America, we might get sensitive to these things. I was giving a session in Connecticut. And then at the end of the session, I said something along these lines. Just be balanced. See how much you're spending. Did you do this? Like if someone doesn't know their zakah, which is going to be actually have to be emphasized in this session, then how can you meet Allah when you spend all that money and you have no knowledge of zakah, which is a pillar of Islam? Yes or no? So then I, when I said that, a sister came to me. She said, brother, I think, you know what? You're giving the wrong image. Allah just said, don't forget your share in this world. Enjoy life. Okay, meaning go for a buffet. But it doesn't mean fill your plate to an extent that you don't finish it. You see, you see, you see what we're trying to do here? We're trying to balance. So she said, still, still, um, this whole still word, right? Still. I said, sister, her husband was next to her. What was your breakfast today? Did you have breakfast? Yes. What was your breakfast? I had this, I had that. What's the bill? What's the total? I think it was 25 or 28 dollars. I said, Mish Haram, you know what 28 dollars can do in another country? Because that was her excuse. Why own a car like that or a house like that? Do you know what 28 dollars can do? Just today, just this morning, I watched a video of what one dollar can do in Syria. May Allah bless the people of Syria, Ya Alameen, and lift the oppression. One dollar. He went and he got a, a, a shay. Then he went and got some mu'ajjanat, like pa cheese pies. And he went and he got some candy, halal marshmallows. He got this, this, and that. One dollar, if I remember the video, was 14,000 lira, taqriban, approximately. If that's, am I around that? Taqriban, one dollar, 14,000. So he's showing you. So now the 28 dollars, you could have fed 17 families in Syria. Can you apply that? No, it's because what can you afford? What do you have? The cost, etc. May Allah grant us wisdom. Say, I mean. And this is a piece of advice from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing us in the Quran. Then they said, And show excellence the way Allah showed you excellence. So Allah showed you ihsan, because Allah does not do less than ihsan, by the way. Allah's level is nothing less than excellent. Allah does not have very good. We have very good. We have good. We have fair. We have uh, fail. Allah has ihsan, nothing else lower than that. So he says, وَأَحْسِنْ And you, Qarun, because of what you have, and that's where we're all stuck, Shway. Now we're, everyone is stuck in a way. Just like how Allah gave you excellence, you should show excellence, especially where? With the money. So everyone here, you have something Allah has given you, the excellence that he placed in you. Some of you may be the voice, 
Some of us may be presentation. Some of us may be uh, IT stuff. Some of us may be uh, cooking. Some of us may be creative things. Allah Ta'ala alam. So since you excelled in that, you should excel in giving back in that field. So it will not be acceptable for someone to be excelling at a point and not provide it back to the people. I remember one time, this is not praise or anything, but just a lesson, may Allah forgive us. One time, I, a period of my life, maybe I was not as active, and one of the shiuch, he saw me in the Friday khutbah, as in attendance. And I attend, obviously, Friday khutbahs all the time. So then he said, why are you here? Why are you sitting? Why are you not giving a khutbah? I said, you know, kada. He said, it's not right and befitting that you sit and you not give khutbahs. And he's like, in my face. And that sounds like a compliment, but he was firm. Like, it's not, I'm not, it's, we're not here to compliment one another. Allah gave you something, you act upon it. You're so well off. What are you doing? What, do something about it. You, you're so talented in that field. You know Quran so good. Are you reading it? You can teach a whole class. Are you doing that? You're so smart. Are you investing a little bit of your week to learn about Islam? Subhanallah. May Allah grant us the best. Amir Rabbil Alameen. وَأَحْسِنْ كَمَا أَحْسَنَ اللَّهُ إِلَيْكَ And show excellence the way Allah showed you excellence. May Allah grant us the best. Ya Rabb. Then the fifth advice, what happens? وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَادَ فِي الْأَرْضِ And do not spread corruption in the land. In Allah. Now you tell me what you remember from the first one. This is the last one. They said Allah does not like that. Those who are corrupting or corruptors. What do you benefit based on the first ayah? Go ahead. Ahsant. The same concept is because Allah does not like it. Allah comes before anything and everything. So what do I learn from this? Ready? Yalla bismillah. Ready inshallah? Someone asks you, you should be good to your parents or tells you. What do many of us say? The ones that are having very tough times with our parents. Well, my father doesn't deserve it. Yes? No, genuinely. Well, you don't know what my mom did to me. So they associated the respect that they show with the respect that they received. And if you want to always live life like that, you will have a miserable life. If you reach a point in your life where you say, I will only show respect when I receive it, it's a quite unequal equation throughout your life. Because if that's what the Prophet applied, no one respected the Prophet the way the Prophet showed them respect. Correct? So the Prophet ﷺ does not do that because, oh, that's what they're doing. There is some influence to that, understandable. But the example of birr walidain. So why show respect to parents? Someone else says, oh, you're right, wallah, you're right. My mom deserves the best. Wallah, every single day she wakes him up for suhoor and she wakes up 30 minutes before us. Happens. And our moms struggle. And sometimes they may not even, subhanAllah, and be sick or so. And they still wake up early to do the suhoor for us. May Allah grant them jannah. Say, I mean. And then, uh, so, say, yeah, and my mom, mashallah, subhanAllah, she used to always drop me to college. And my mom is the one who delivered me the whole story. And my father, Allah, my father, every time he comes back home, uh, paint on his clothing, and he looks very exhausted. For us to have a living, you're right, he deserves my respect. Neither case one or case two. Case two makes it even more obligatory on you to show righteousness, even more emphasis. So why now, based on this ayah, show respect to our parents? Because Allah said so, done. Because Allah said that, done. If my parents are nice, easygoing, they made the job easier. If they are very difficult or whatever the case is, they made the job, but it's to be accomplished, to be attempted. That's why we are so grateful that Allah judges our efforts and it's not all about the results. There are very few cases, very few. You can do anything to your parents to please them and you will never be pleased, correct? Remember that one time it was so hot outside and your parents told you wear a jacket? Remember last week? Your mom said, Elvis jacket. It was very warm, Elvis jacket. You're like, I don't want to wear a jacket. Why are you always like this? My body, not your body. Well, let's like, smack you, my body, not your body. Right? It's like, my body, whatever. So then, subhanAllah, Yaqi, wear, wear the jacket. Wear the jacket and go to Jannah. If that's what it takes to go to Jannah, wear a jacket. Would you wear it? 
If you have that mindset, inshallah, it will make the job easier. So now, if your mom does not say thank you or your dad does not say jazakallahu khairan, it is hard, but you don't take that as a primary. If they say it, that's a bonus. And it's very tough. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Ameer Rabbil Alameen. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Inna Allah la yuhibbu al fasidin. Before I tell you Qarun's reaction, did you notice the process of the advising? Because that, that's very interesting. Qarun, he's well off, he's prestigious, he's of the elite now, khalas, he's big shot. Hardly anyone can talk to him. The way they started, okay, generally, وَابْتَغِي فِي أَتَاكَ اللَّهُ دَارَ الْآخِرَةِ Seek the Akhirah, hope, right? وَأَحْسِنْ and uh, uh, be good to people uh, and enjoy life, enjoy life. وَلَا تَنْسَ نَصِيبَكَ Then at the end, وَلَا تَبْغِي Don't corrupt, do not corrupt. You see what happened? They were kind, they were gentle, they built the stage, then they gave him the warning because of who he is. Because these righteous people are about to advise another group in this story and it will be almost reversed. It will actually be very different because that's not the same advice that you give to others. People, forgive me, young people, okay, especially the ones that may be uh, overzealous and so on, they come to me and they say, brother, What's the hadith? Listen, my mom is so annoying. A'udhu billah, why you say that? She says that I cannot, it's haram to drink seven up at iftar. So please, brother, tell me, uh, what's the answer? Is there something, what did Allah say, the Prophet ﷺ say? What are they focusing on? The content. But what have they failed to ask how to deliver the content? And that is very important. The scholars, look what they compare. They say, compare your manners, your akhlaq, to your knowledge, like salt is in a, uh, like pizza, مثلاً. you're baking something. How much salt do you put in that place? Just a little bit of salt. And what's the thing that you want? Dough, flour. صح? طحين. Make your akhlaq like the tahin. That's the main part. And the salt, okay, what to say? What to say? Uh, two minutes. We can say the whole story in no time, right? But there is khalas, the way, the how. I have to relate it to you. Mirroring the image from the phone to the TV. That's the how. May Allah grant us the best. Say, I mean. So they went and they start to build the stage, build the stage until they mentioned it to him. Sometimes I fail, sometimes you fail, sometimes I succeed, sometimes you succeed. I remember, should I say the target? Well, no. Okay. So I went to a store. I mentioned the store, right? So then, as I was walking in one aisle, uh, some lady, she was uh, vaping. So as I walking, she vaped. Okay, then I walked in. And it kind of came on me a little bit. First of all, I was very disturbed. Like, you're vaping carelessly, people around, whatever the case is. And they were Arab. So, so I said, uh, excuse me, ma'am. Please, uh, no vaping in the store. Do you work here? So I said, I don't have to work here to tell you that. She's like, well, whatever. Uh, uh, then she's not bad. I said, I appreciate it. Also, when I was young, I had asthma, which is true. I didn't make up stuff. Right? I never told you that. I'm sorry. I had asthma when I was young. Okay? <laughs> right? Then she's like, oh, okay. I said, this one advisor, I appreciate that. Then she actually put it away. Then she, her mom was in the aisle. So then I went to go get something. It was a pencil case. So then she told her mom, I'm like, she didn't know I was Arabi. This was like the proudest white moment I ever had. She didn't even notice my accent. I'm like, I was just like so happy. She's like, He told me, he told me not to smoke. Then, then, then she said, then I told him, Do you work here? And he said, no. And I'm like, I'm like, Ya Rab, Ya Rab, I don't slip and say, Salamu alaikum. You know what I mean? Subhanallah. So, so then I left the aisle and went to one of the workers and I told them, Is it, isn't it illegal to vape in the store? Then she said, yeah, she was holding a bottle. She's like, yeah, it's illegal, but everybody does it. Oh, no, who cares? Because of people like that employee, the world is corrupted. I'm not joking. Because people said, ah, Allah, uh, advise, correct, move on. Break the rules, break the rules, break the rules, break the rules. You break the rules, you break the rules, and then this is what happens. May Allah forgive us. So you have to be very, very careful. Sometimes 
yani you can say other stuff. This happened, uh, I, was, I was traveling last Wednesday from Denver, Colorado to New York. In the flight, I was having an aisle seat, and there's a person right the row in front of me in the aisle seat. And you can tell, and you can watch their screen sometimes, right? You do that. May Allah forgive us. Say, I mean, don't do that. Now, what happened is that this lady, maybe 50 years old, was wearing glasses, watching a movie on the iPad. There's no humor in this one, no joke in this one. Maybe we can laugh right after it. She was watching the most haram scenes I have ever seen in an airplane. Something is extremely unacceptable. No clothing whatsoever. Not like in a, in a, in a beach scene. I could not believe this is happening in an airplane where next to her are a couple, husband and wife, with a kid under two on their lap. And she's watching this. Complete haram. And I'm like, I'm preparing the lecture. <laughs> Good luck with the iman, right? And the faith. The, the, we're landing along with my faith. <laughs> we're all landing together. May Allah protect us. So I'm like, Okay, maybe it's that one scene, khalas, a'udhu billah. And you know your heart is racing. <laughs> and then I can't even focus, what are paying attention? And then like, people will notice on Sunday I'm not ready. So anyhow, so then another scene came. It's a whole full-blown movie. So the movie is like that. So I said something like, no one, alayhsa minkum rajulun rashid. There's no dignified human being around her to tell her something. Forget the people. Does she not have any haya? any modesty, any shame. What do I do? Now, where is the nervousness? I'll be honest. We're in the airplane. I'm not in Target. In Target, I can just go to the car and leave. In the airplane, it's three hours and 25 minutes. I'm stuck. So we've got to do something. What do we do? I don't know what to do. So I said, excuse me, ma'am. Ma'am. And she's focused. A'udhu <laughs> Billah. Excuse me, ma'am. Then I get up a little bit. Excuse me. Then she's like, yes. I'm like, well, no, I'm going to take off the glasses. And, like, well, I could not, I've never in my life, in my whole life, I've never seen anything like that. I saw once in college, in, in classroom, yes. Okay, it's a college guy. I'm not saying it's halal. As I understand. Uh, whatever. We, I, we did very good with him, mashallah. Okay? Anyhow. But that lady, she's too old. Like, what are you doing? Everything is messed up. So I said, ma'am, the scene's pretty bad. There are children in the airplane. There are children. She's like, oh, Okay. And she skipped every time it came. How did you know? Don't worry about it. Anyhow, <laughs> all right? All right? Wallahi, right when I said that, wallahi, she went to the iPad and she skipped. Sometimes, and sometimes I fail in this, that we may think people are just too evil or too bad. And you have no idea how receptive they are. And maybe, and maybe, wallahi ta'ala alam, and I hope that this will, not, this will be the last flight that she takes watching these things. Ya Rabbi. And may Allah guide to Islam. But subhanAllah, now if I tell her, قَالَ اللَّهُ قَالَ الرَّسُولُ She's like, excuse me ma'am, there's a guy harassing me. Right? But you come nice, kada, you use the whiteness. Yes, you use that, right? Because now I'm, I'm very inspired by the target experience. <laughs> right? She will not know I'm Arabic, I'm just as white as you, right? Whatever the case is, subhanAllah. And it goes through. So depending on the person, you continue with the advice. So I tried my best to hit what? To hit the most sensitive spot, children. There's something about children across the world. That's why, FYI, the case of Gaza is very impactful. One of the biggest reasons, because kids are involved. Babies are dying. And there's something about us human beings. When we see a child being oppressed, it just moves us. Who comes in a category as well? SubhanAllah, men, you're badin. Right? May Allah protect us. What's happening now in the news in the Shifa hospital? You heard what's happening in Shifa hospital. And this should boil every human being with some sanity in their hearts what they're doing to our sisters. So that now intensifies and you will see what will happen there and what the real men will do bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah protect us, Ya Rabb. And may Allah forgive us for our shortcomings. So that's what they said. وَلَا تَبْغِ الْفَسَدَ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُفْسِدِينَ Beautiful advice, yes? Even Allah, believe, Allah, even Allah narrates it that it's positive. Even Allah puts it in the Quran, it's a great packaged advice, five pieces. Very smart, very wise, what to start, what not to start, how to speak. You're speaking with someone that is wearing the clothing of millions. So there's a way to speak to them. And how did he respond? He perhaps, perhaps, had one of the worst, most, most miserable responses in the history of humanity. He didn't say, mind your own business. That might have been lesser than this, by the way. 
He didn't say, well, I still worked hard. No, he completely cut off Allah. In the sense, he says, I got this. Stop saying, Ul alhamdulillah. Ma alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. He says, I worked hard. Look, look how many years I tried to build this. I came from nothing. Remember his beginning? He was a nobody. So now he built it. So he said, I worked hard. Sweat, blood, tears. Now you tell me, thank Allah. I never imagined anyone in the world would ever say something like that until I was in college. There was a brother, such a good man, subhanAllah. And he came as an immigrant. And mashaAllah, tabarakAllah, learned the language came a plus, a plus, a plus, the smartest one in the whole department. Subhanallah, when he got the transcript and khalas, his name has become very known across the whole department, uh, we told him, you know what, you know how sometimes people tell you, bro, you need to pray, uh, you need to thank Allah for the blessing. Anyone ever told you that? Wallah, you need to go down, make sajda. So we kind of advised him, like, you know what, be as grateful as you can. And he said, stop saying that. When every time you tell me to be grateful to God, it makes me feel like I didn't do anything. I was, I could not, wallahi, qarun. Right? We don't judge the hearts, but the, the statement is a disaster. It's like, every time you say, thank God, it's like you're not recognizing the amount of effort I had to put in this. May Allah protect us. That's why, wallahi, shuf, Allah knows who among us is like that. But some of us, Allah will have a ceiling that you cannot see so that you don't end up being a qarun. I'm just saying it out there. I'm just leaving it out there. Some of us, Allah is not making us grow. We don't know who it is. Doesn't mean you don't stop growing. I will continue to grow and you too, inshallah. But sometimes Allah stops you from growing further because you would have been qarun 2.0. May Allah forgive us. So qarun says, Qala innama utitu ala ilmin indi. Since it's Sunday and it's a very detailed session, let me now share with you another opinion about the meaning of this ayah. Ready? Inshallah, focused. This, this was relatively new to me. It might be new to many of us. He says, I have been granted all of this because of my no own knowledge. So I worked hard for it. The other meaning, ulama said some of them, إِنَّمَا أُوْتِيتُ عَلَىٰ عِلْمٍ عِنْدِي Meaning, Allah knows ilm that I deserve it. You see that? So he's saying, I have what I have because I deserve it. So Allah gave it to me because I'm worthy of it. Now, this sounds very familiar to another verse. Focus on the verse. Chapter 41, verse 50. Allah says, وَلَئِنْ أَذَقْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنَّا مِنْ بَعْدِ ضَرَّاءَ مَسَّتْهُ When a person tastes, focus on the story, when the person tastes some mercy from us, from Allah, after being what? Facing adversity. And after ضَرَّاءَ After, you had a very tough year. 2023 was horrible. 2024, MashaAllah, the best year ever. Allah says, some people, they say, هَذَا لِي I deserve it. And I don't even think Yom Qiyamah is coming. And if I were to meet Allah, إِنَّ لِي عِنْدَهُ لَلْحُسْنَ And if I go to back to Allah, I, Allah will give me so much and good because I'm a, such a good person, I deserve it. SubhanAllah, some people are like that. I deserve it. لا. This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahmah. Fantastic. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a long ayah. I could not put the Arabic part because the PowerPoint to make it clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوَلَمْ يَعْلَمْ Did he not know that Allah أَهْلَكَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ Allah has destroyed some of the generations before him who were far superior to him in power and greater in accumulating wealth like there were before you, Qarun, the people of who were very rich. Ad and Thamud, very well off, right? Ad specifically, the amount of wealth was insane. Who was their prophet? Who was the prophet that was sent to Ad? Hud, excellent. And the prophet sent to Thamud? Salih, fantastic. So Allah says, have you not seen previous generations? Pause, pause. What do you and I learn from this? What do you learn from this? Try it. Jared. Don't be like them. Fantastic. 100%. Uh, what else? This is very important. Try it. Bismillah. Allah yahfadak. Be barik fi. Now, Allah said to Qarun, 
Have you not seen those before you? Now, Qarun is our reference. So next time we're thinking to be Qarun, remember what happened to Qarun. You see that? And this can also apply besides that. It can be at your own department at work. Someone was not working. Someone was not doing his job. Someone was cheating. They got caught using the business credit card. So now you will learn that I don't do that. Simple, very simple. We do that every day, every day. Even kids. Did you see what mama did to him? <sighs> do you not see what your older, stronger sibling has faced? And he fell on the ground. What if she pushes us the way she pushed her older son? And they avoid it. Yes or no? Kids, why do you, not, I, you and I, inshallah, do that with Allah? You're about to do something that is wrong or something that is good to push you. And remember what Allah did to those far stronger than you. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us and grant us the best. This man, this loser, he became, he became worse. He went to go and break the hearts of the people. فَخَرَجَ عَلَىٰ قَوْمِ فِي زِينَتِهِ He went flashing his car, his uh, jewelry, entourage. The, and he, so he became worse. Some people are like that. May Allah forgive us. He doesn't care about anyone. And these people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose them. May Allah conceal us. Say ameen. Then when he left in that way, what happened? The people around him, قَالَ الَّذِينَ يُرِيدُونَ الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا I intentionally did not put the whole verse. Those who desired the life of this world wished. I'm not telling you what they wish yet, but you should expect what they will wish for. You should imagine what they will wish for. Why? Why can you have an educated guess to what their wish is? Why can you have an educated guess, even if you don't know the whole surah? What's the key word here that will tell you what they will very likely wish? Because when you read the Quran, we're going to pay attention to this. Allah says, yes, Ahsanti. They're the ones who want this dunya. Their focus is dunya. So since they're obsessed about this life, it means the ends justify the means. What do you expect them to say? Please raise your hand if you don't know the verse. I know, brother. I'm here just to help you out. This emotional support. Huh? Huh? What is it? Go ahead, try it. Money, mashallah, may Allah bless you and grant you money. Shuf, wala had say ameen, subhanallah. Why, why, why you guys are like that? Subhanallah. Okay, this, this question, let's be honest. Raise your hand if you think money uh, can uh, bring happiness. Um, very few people. Usually the broke ones, by the way. <laughs> la, la. May Allah grant you jannah. Zakallah khair. So for the ones that did not raise their hands, me and the masakeen, before you leave the venue, your wallet, you empty it here, inshallah. <laughs> Since it doesn't bring you happiness, mashallah, empty your whole wallet. Really. Your hands may have not been raised, but I can hear your hearts yelling. Yes, it makes me happy. Oh, you medical students. I mean, <coughs> sorry. Sorry. Okay. Right? Uh, people uh, that do things they don't like and do things for 15 years that they hate every moment of it. Why? Because the paycheck, which is understandable, because you have to have a living. And whatever the case may be, may Allah grant us the best. But can money really bring happiness? No. Oh, you bet it does. Oh, wallahi, it does. Oh, Allah. Go ask your dad, does money bring happiness or not? If he tells you not, is he here? Is your father here? No. Bring him next Sunday. <laughs> With his wallet, if he says no. And bring, him, bring you too, all right? Money brings happiness. But what? We go back to the first part of this lecture, not the wedding, the circle. What was the circle? Loser. What was the other circle? The winner. Many people and the majority on earth believe the path to happiness is money. Majority on earth, right? So they take the path to becoming very rich. And when they become multimillionaires and billionaires, do they end up being very happy and content? Not really. Not really. And we have so many cases, they're countless, so much so that we have the richest uh, lady that ever walked on earth in our era. I mentioned the story maybe a while ago, Christina Onassis. She, at one point when her father died and her brother died, she became the richest woman on earth. Her daughter is alive till this day. 
She's a horseback rider, I think, in the Olympics. Christina Onassis, she said, and I quote, she said, money does not bring happiness. And what's her biggest proof? She's not happy. And why is she sounding arrogant? No, because she is the richest. So she has all the right to say, that path did not make me happy. And it's very powerful for a rich one to say that, yes? Subhanallah. Tayyib, you just said it can ha ha make you happy. But with what are you do using the money? That's the question. Ready? How did you get the money? Is that enough? And how you're spending the money is what makes money bring you joy. How happy when you're able to be very rich and pay off someone else's student loan? Go. Go feel the emotions. Correct? How does it feel when, yes, an online donation is cool. Don't get me wrong. May Allah bless everybody. And make sure you come a Friday. Sah? Friday, next Friday, inshallah, for the iftar. And support the ICD. It's great stuff. When you see your work, when you have a video recorded, for example, of something, how much joy does it bring? Correct? Where your money goes. So that is what the happiness comes about. Sulaiman alayhi salam, the richest to ever exist. Not even a kafir was as equal. Correct? Did money not make Sulaiman so happy? It did. And he even asked Allah for it. So it can be happy if you have it with Iman and you spend it with Iman with faith. So what's the element? All that path that I was talking about. Remember point A and point B? Money. Some people believe fame. If I don't care about money, bro. If I got 100,000K subscribers on YouTube, I'm the happiest person alive. You got 1.2 million. Now what? Go here and watch. I don't encourage you to go in depth. Some of the biggest YouTubers who have a video at the end and tell you it didn't feel the way I expected it to feel. It's a shock. But to the believer, to subscribers, to the believer, minimum wage can be a source of joy. Because there's iman involved in it, there's faith in it. And there's a hadith to that. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, In this world, in this room, in this venue, there's four groups of people. There's no fifth. Group one, people who Allah gave money and knowledge. Ilm, nafi', beneficial knowledge. So well off and so educated, they fear the knowledge. They fear Allah with the, with the money that they have. So they spend it. Allah even says, fi. He fears Allah with it. And they spend it and connect their families. What did, what did the Prophet giving you a hint? If the Prophet said, I want you to wake up on this one as much as you can. He can like, take it a notch. The Prophet has said, that person fears Allah with the money. This means in everything, correct? In zakah, in salah, in the spending, in this and that. What did the Prophet emphasize? وَيَصِلُ فِيهِ رَحِمَةً And they connect with their families with the money they have. What is the Prophet making you wake up for? Do not make more money at the expense of cutting the family. If that's what's happening, you're going to take it down, right? And may Allah grant you and I the ability to balance things. Sometimes we have seasons, right? A season, you're very busy. Then a season, you do something else, spend more time, right? May Allah grant us wisdom and hikmah. So that, the Prophet says, that group, the wealthiest of people with the highest level of religiosity, are, are they not beautiful, these people? Do you know one like that? I know a few. <sighs> Lovely. MashaAllah. But say right? They tell me that, right? You know, we wish to be like them, No? Do you wish to be like them or no? I'm happy with the way I am. MashaAllah. May Allah always make you say that in the right time. The Prophet says in two ahadith, لا حسد إلا في اثنتين. In one narration, I'm going to go back to that one, don't worry. There's two situations in, in which you can wish to be like someone. Only two in one narration. The other narration, only two. If you put the ahadith together, what's the total? Three. How is that? Because in, in both narrations, he repeated the same point. So there's one point that is repeated. That's too much math for Sunday, I know. And then there's one point that is unique and one point that is unique and there's one that is repeated. So a total of three. So I'm going to combine both ahadith for you. Okay, both ahadith. The Prophet sallallahu said how these are the only cases you can say, I wish I was like her. I wish I was like him. Other than these three, it's not worth it. Number one, take a shot, take a shot. Give me. Knowledge. Someone who's educated walks the talk and teaches it. I wish I was like that sister, like that brother. You can wish for that. While 
not having them, lose it. While not having them, lose it. Not like, I wish I'm like that sister and I become better and then dethrone her. And, no. <laughs> that's hazard, hazard. That's not the hazard that the Prophet is praising. It's the thing, I want to be like you and may Allah bless what you have. Someone who's educated, practices what he preaches and teaches it. Group number two. Go ahead. Uh, modest and humble. Uh, there's truth to that. There's truth to that. But remember, humbleness in general uh, cannot be confirmed. Any, any deed cannot really be confirmed about the intention. But in this hadith, it's not one of us. But it's, you can connect it anyway. Ahsanti. Go ahead. Who said, uh, you, said, you said death? The brother said death. If we go really, really academic, the way someone dies. Ah, Shaheed, okay, tell me Shaheed. I, I said death, and I'm like, okay, this is a. Uh, we're going to end on a very depressing note, guys. Right? Shaheed, may Allah grant us Shahada, Ya Rabbil Alameen. In the hadith, that's not one of them, but that's something, yani, may Allah grant us Shahada. Even Umar al Khattab, Radlani, used to pray for Shahada. Ahsan, Allah barik fi kira. But in these two hadith, go ahead. Fantastic. You're in a fundraising dinner. Inshallah, ICD next Friday. Brother I this Friday, this Friday, this Friday, forgive me. This Friday, Brother Isa comes, uh, and the one, inshallah, who's going to, uh, who is our first $50,000? Allahu Akbar. Then one brother says, $50,000, and all of us, I wish I was like him. Why? Not because 50000 because where he spent the 50000 You see what just happened? These people, you didn't have the dunya, they just want the 50000 not in a way that I spend it in a good cause. You see the difference? Okay, fantastic. The last one, last one. Try. Uh, this one has a lot of iman. Okay, good, good. Ahsant, close. The one who knows Quran very well. But that's enough? No. At least half of us, if not majority, we read Quran like a pro. But how many read it day and night? So the Prophet says, يَقْرَأْهُ أَنَا اللَّيْلِ وَطَرَفَ النَّارِ Someone who knows Quran so good and reads it day and night. May Allah make us of them. These three people are like, you know what? I wish I was like them. So these people who want the dunya, obsessed about this life, they say, يَا لَيْتَ لَنَا مِثْلَ مَا أُوتِيَا قَارُونَ وَاللَّهُ قَارُونَ Lucky. This is the luckiest man ever. We wish we have what he has. إِنَّهُ لَذُ حَظٍ عَظِيمٍ Such a, That's what luck looks to them. That's what success is defined by them. How did Allah define success in Faizin in Quran? Really quick, really quick. You hear it almost every Friday khutbah. Who's the successful? Who is the winner? Every khutbah almost. Uh, close, huh? The one who prays, but tell me the ayah. Almost every khutbah. So now next time you hear it this Friday, inshallah, you're like, ah, oh, Sunday, I remember. Okay, but the ayah, the ayah. Ah. Yallah. Take our time so everybody's like, ah, oh, what is it? It's like the wedding, remember? And it is... وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهَ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا See, mashallah, every khufaid khutbah. Look, if you've memorized it. You don't even know what surah it is, but you just keep hearing it, right? And whoever obeys Allah and the Prophet, they are truly successful. These are the lucky ones. May Allah make us of them. So when they said that, Ah, I wish I had what Qarun has. Look at that. Look at that flashy car. Look at this. Look at that. They don't care how he got it. They just care that he has it. And they want to be just like him. Now, what did Allah say? وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ And I intentionally did not put the whole verse. The people with knowledge said, you should have an educated guess as to what they will say. Correct? Make sense? وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ And now, as I promised, to finish the hadith. What hadith? I forgot about your promise. The hadith of the four categories, remember? Category one, someone who is blessed with wealth and they are educated, beneficial knowledge. They fear Allah with the money. The Prophet said, فَهُوَ بِأَفْضَلِ الْمَنَازِلِ That human being is the greatest human being on earth. The Prophet said that. It's not my words or your words. The one who's so rich and uses that money, فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ بِأَفْضَلِ The greatest man on earth and a woman. What's group number two? Group number two, nothing. <laughs> no money. Minimal money. Limited money. But what do they have? Knowledge. They fear Allah. What do they say? The Prophet said, before they, he tells you exactly the narration, he says, The person is about to say something, 
from a very sincere heart. They mean every word. What will group two say? If I had what group one had, I would do the same. That's it. That's all what they did. What did the Prophet say? Two words. فَأَجْرُهُمَا سَوَاءَ Group two gets the same reward as group one. Group two gets the same reward as group one. In that fundraiser, $50,000, you might be a miskeen. And you're like, wallah, if I had 50000 I would donate. In dunya, will you get a tax receipt for your gift? Will the IRS give you a tax uh, receipt for your donation? Can you apply, I intended $50,000, so give me a break in my taxes, because wallah, I was sincere. If I had it, they'll probably deport you from America. Right? With Allah, He will give you a tax receipt the same way the 50000 that was given. Because you're sincere and you meant it. The one quick question, what's the biggest of signs that you meant it? Because all of us in any dinner, ICD, mashallah, every after four rak'at, fundraiser. Mashallah, may Allah bless the ICD. Say I mean. So how can you know if you're really serious about Wallah, if I had it, like that doctor, like that sister, like that millionaire, I would give. What's one of the biggest proof for you? Not for me or anyone else. For you that you are really truthful. Go ahead, tell me one. Go ahead, listen up. Mashallah, this is by far one of the best examples or points. Is that, okay, you cannot give 50,000. What can you give? 50. Okay, give 50. Wallah, brother, the thing about the 50, Wallah, to be honest with you, uh, Wallah, I've had 50,000. What do you have now? 50. Tab, give the 50. I'm struggling. Tab, you will definitely struggle at 50,000. Well, then I'll have a million. No, don't say that. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us the best. Another sign, ready, is that you feel pain, a little bit sad, that you cannot give 50. So if you watch the news in Gaza, and you're like, Wallah, if I was able to, li- to, to deliver food, would you have delivered? I believe you would. I believe all of you would have. But to know is that you're in pain. And inshallah, all of you are in pain when you watch something like that, correct? So that's a sign that you're sincere, inshallah. Now, how will you act upon it that gives you a better picture of yourself? So the ones with knowledge, what do they say? They will now say a very short advice, not long like the Qarun, and they will not be as gentle as you thought or I thought. You know what they start with? Waylakum. Shame on you. Oof, oof. With Qarun, you said, be good to people the way Allah was good to you. You said, don't uh, forget to enjoy life. And to these masakin, you said, waylakum. Yes, some people, you have to talk to them like that. Some people, they're not wearing the clothing of millions of dollars. So you can talk to them a little bit differently. They are in the neighborhood. They know each other. He's my next door neighbor. You see what happened? Waylakum. You can go hard a little bit. Waylakum. Thawabullahi khayrun. What Allah has prepared is best. And it's better, not even equal to what Qarun has. But that reward, that winner, remember the winner circle? Now, finally, as I promised early in the session, what was the answer I gave to the crowd in the wedding? This is the answer. You have to have these two elements to enjoy what Allah has given you in life. For you to have a hayat an tayyibah, you heard that before, the good life? What did Allah say? There's no dhakar or untha, not a single male or female. Whoever does good deeds, saliha, righteous deeds, wahua, mu'min, while you're a believer, what happens? فَلَا نُحْيِيَنَّهُ حَيَاةً طَيِّبًا Allah says not a single male or female that does good stuff, but out of iman, out of faith. That's why now it gets a bit emotional or sensitive. or Because so many people on earth, they do good stuff, but without faith. And they will not find the fruits that they were looking for. But when it's done, that's what Allah says. They do righteous, wahuwa mu'min, we will give them the good life. Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ibn Abbas, they have a difference of opinion on the exact meaning of the good life. Ibn Abbas said the good life means as-sa'ada, happiness, joy. That's what Ibn Abbas translated or described what the good life looks like. Ali ibn Abi Talib said al-qana'a, contentment. You're in peace. That's the joy you get in this dunya, is that you're in peace, tranquil. You got a promotion. You didn't. Uh, you have a child. You did not. 
uh, someone you proposed, you got rejected, uh, you applied for a school, they, they did not accept your letter. You're content with your situation, though it might be sad, but overall, you will never say anything that is against Allah. May Allah make you all at that level. If you reach that, what is said about contentment? Being content is a treasure that has no ending. It's like an account, a checking balance that is infinite. You are a billionaire if you're content. Because there are others who have billions that are not content. One time there was a brother, very rich brother, okay, Muslim. And he doesn't even drive his car. You know, forgive us, some athletes are so well off, they have jet, uh, private jets, right? Some people have their own chauffeurs and drivers. That's how rich that brother is. He doesn't even drive his car. A super expensive vehicle. As he's driving, he went like around like a humble area. Uh, and there were a group of brothers, Muslimin. They were eating uh, simple food, full hummus and all that stuff. Okay, falafel, very humble stuff. So then when they were eating, they looked at the Mercedes. It was an S-Class, whatever. So he said, bro, this is life. This is, this is the life. This. So then... The light turned green. The brother, it was in the back, the wealthy brother, he heard them. They had eye contact. They got a little bit nervous. <laughs> so he told the driver, come back, return. So طبعاً, the shabab, the young people here, they freaked out. What will he do to us? So he came, reversed, U-turn, came. And he left the car and he walked to them. He said, uh, brother, wallahi, yani, may, mashallah, tabarakallah. Listen, listen, calm down. He said, let me tell you. How is the meal? You like the meal? You like the fool? You like the hummus? Fantastic. How about we do a switch? That's what the rich guy is saying. How about we do a switch? My doctor told me I have a health situation that I cannot consume this food. And I used to love this food. It's a, a joy. Now I'm on a very strict diet due to health reasons. I can have this. I cannot have that. So how about this? I take your health and you take my car. And the chauffeur. So what happened to them? Hey, amma, you're, you're good. Zakallah khair. May Allah bless you. He's like, enjoy your meal because you have more than what I have. And he left. May Allah grant him Jannah, that man. Because the health is beyond sometimes wealth. May Allah protect us. And case by case, may Allah grant us the best. So the people of knowledge, وَيْلَكُمْ ثَوَابُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لِمَنْ آمَنَ وَعَمْنَ صَالِحًا وَلَا يُلَقَّهَا إِلَّا الصابرون. But you gotta be patient because you can't, like, I can't see Jannah. Jannah's taking way too long. When you describe Jannah, the kids, they tell you, Jannah sounds like Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm like, لا حول قوة إلا بالله. Right? So you explain, like, إلا الصابرون. إلا الصابرون. There's so much in Jannah waiting for you. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, we have five minutes left. Musa عليه السلام, he asks Allah, Ya Allah, what's the lowest level in Jannah? Like the biggest, yeah, and the lowest in Jannah. Doesn't get lower. Like, what's the worst seat in an airplane? Middle seat next to the bathroom in the back, aisle 45. Right? You will miss your next flight if you have a connection. Anyhow, it's pretty bad. So, the biggest miskin, okay, in Jannah, he is the last one to leave hell. Make sense? So, the last one to leave hell from the Muslimin, of course. Some people deserve it. May Allah forgive us and protect us. So, then he leaves, like, oh, finally, I'm done with you. I am the most blessed person in the world. That's what he thinks. Because he left hell. He didn't even go to Jannah. He's the most blessed. May Allah protect us. So then there's multiple narrations. In this one about Musa alayhi salam, Allah says he is the one that Allah tells him, you will get in dunya what the richest person ever kingdom will have on earth. Like all of earth will be yours in dunya. So the man said, I will get that, and that's the lowest. Lowest. Yani, I want to give names, forget names. So that's the lowest. Then Allah says, وَمِثْلُهُ 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 Times one, times two, times three, times five. Five times more. Then the man says, I'm good. رَضِيت 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 Then Allah says, and more, and times ten. That's the lowest in Jannah. So then Musa asks, Ya Allah, what about the highest? Allah says, arat. These are the ones that I gharastu karamatahum biyadi. They're the ones that I will honor them. They're the ones that I will give them something they have never seen. Something they have never heard and something they have never imagined. May Allah make us of that group. 
Brothers and sisters, they said that to them. And right then and there, what happened? Allah tells you, فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ Allah made the earth open up and swallow Qarun and all of his wealth, and even his house and the palace. He looked down upon people. Now you're below all people. Subhanallah. So watch how you talk and how you walk. فَخَسَفْنَا بِهِ وَبِدَارِهِ الْأَرْضِ طيب, what about the other ones? The other ones were group four. What's group four? Group four, people have no money and they have no, no knowledge. But they want to be like group three. But who's group three? Group three, they have, but, it, but they do not have. These people are the corruptors on earth today. They go spend in the haram, spend gambling, alcohol, this, send weapons, do that. Genocide, so much wealth, so much power, but they have no deen, no iman. So Allah says, or the Prophet says, they are the worst on earth. Group four, they have no money, no knowledge. What do they say? If I had money like group three, I would have done the same. What did the Prophet say? They are just as bad as group three. But they didn't do it. I know another hadith. You cannot end a lecture like that. I know another hadith. What's it? What is it? The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you're about to do something that is wrong and you don't end up doing it, God's give you good deeds. Is that true or not? But here we tell you, or the Prophet is saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the person group four is about to do a bad deed, they don't end up doing it, but they're still punished. There's a difference. The ones that are about to do the bad deed and they did not do it out of the fear of Allah, not the fear of the people, the teacher told you in the test, do not flip the test, right? Do not flip the test, wait, wait, do not flip your test until we're ready. No one is watching, you're about to flip it, the teacher turns around, you put it back. You will be held accountable as if you flipped it. But some will say, I was scared of the teacher, not Allah. Allah will reward you for not flipping it. Subhanallah, so adjust your intention. Don't say, since, I'm gonna, I, since I always wish to go to the prom, and I'm not going to go to the prom, and I'm sinful anyways, let me go to the prom. A'udhu <laughs> billah. Right? That's not the point. The point is to adjust your intention. So when they got swallowed, what was the response of the people? It is certainly Allah who gives in abundance. It's Allah who gives, and it's Allah who takes. So they were very grateful that they were not swallowed like him. So watch what you wish for. May Allah grant you and I the best in the dunya. Say I mean. Well, you're scared. Khalas. Rabbana atina fi dunya. Hasana. Wa fil akhirati. Waqina. Adab al-Nar. May Allah grant us the best of this life. The best of the afterlife. And may Allah protect us from the hellfire. Jazakumullah khair. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.